Hi everyone, this is Kylene Dibble, the Executive Director of Parents for Public Schools of Pitt County. And I am so excited to continue our 2021 Spring Tour Series. And today we are here at CM Epps with uh, the principal there and an intern. So I'd like for them to introduce themselves. Ms. Harris, tell us who you are. Good morning, I'm Kim Harris. I've been here at Epps as the principal for one year, February 1st made one year, and it has been very exciting and I'm looking forward to continue great things here. Excellent, and Ms. Lucas, tell us what you're doing there this year. Hi, I'm in my last year of administrative internship and I am learning tons of great stuff under um, the leadership of Ms. Harris. All right, and Ms. Lucas is going to help us out in just a few minutes. Uh, CMFs has been very proactive and they have put together a great presentation about their school. So we're gonna talk with Ms. Harris just a little bit about CMFs. And then Ms. Lucas is going to share her screen and show us a bit of video and a bit of presentation about CMFs. So you'll get a great treat today with these wonderful women. Um, so Ms. Harris, let's talk a little bit about some common questions that parents have as they start looking at middle school. Um, and one of those is always, how many students do you have there at your school? So we currently have 654 students enrolled here at Epps. All right, 654 middle school students. It sounds like an exciting time there. Um, and if someone were to walk into one of your classrooms, what would you say would be a typical number of students in a classroom? typically around 24 students. All right, so usually 24 students. Um, this is a good time to say that we are filming during a COVID year. This video will be available for years to come. So you might be watching this several years after we are filming this, um, but we are filming during the pandemic. And so uh, some things may be different this year than a typical year, but in a typical year, about 24 students. The other thing you'll notice is that um, although we are filming during the pandemic, You'll see that Ms. Harris is not wearing a mask today, and that's because she's been so smart to put do not disturb signs on her door, and she is alone in her office. Um, but if someone were to need to come in, you'll see her put her mask on. So we just, we want to be clear about the fact that Pitt County Schools is following such great safety measures. Um, another question that parents often ask on a middle school tour, Ms. Harris, is what's the change from elementary school to middle school in terms of those specials classes and encore classes? Because I think that that model changes quite a bit. Right, so here we have um, two electives per day. Students will attend two electives per day. So they get two electives per semester. So throughout the year, they'll have the opportunity to take four electives, unless they're taking a year long course such as chorus, um, band, orchestra, or AIG. The other electives that we have are STEM class. We have this great STEM that class that just started here this year, and it's focusing on different career paths for students, such as culinary, electrical, movie making, engineering. They have nine different stations in there that they rotate through, and, and it's awesome. The kids have really enjoyed it. We also have CTE, which is our computer class. We have health and PE. We have an amazing art teacher. Um, I think I covered everything. <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like they get some really great choices and what a nice change um, that they no longer go just once a week, but they really get to dive deep into those subjects because they go every day for a whole semester and then get to change the next semester uh, unless they're taking one of those year long classes. Um, another question parents often have is about the change in communication. So I know I have an elementary school student and a middle school student. And for my middle school student, I'm no longer getting that weekly folder that I have to sign the back of. Um, so tell us a little bit about how communication changes and what type of communication parents can expect during middle school. Okay, so you're right, Kylie. We don't send the photos home every week, but I do send out a weekly call. It goes out every week, every Sunday night at six o'clock. So at six thirty, I'm sorry. It is important that we do have your current phone number so that you can stay up to date. The same information that's put out on the calls about upcoming events and what's going on at Epps also goes on all of our social media outlets. Um, it so we have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It also posts, um, the call doesn't post, but things going on at EPS also post on our website. It is up to date. 
So you can also receive that same call um, via email. You can the same information if we have your email address and that's how you choose to. So parents, even in middle school, there's great communication with you. Um, I always give the plug from Parents for Public Schools that it's great to introduce yourself to each of the teachers. Uh, at the beginning of the year, there will be more teachers in middle school than you had in elementary, um, but make sure to do that so that those lines of communication are open from the very beginning, but then you'll get phone calls, you'll be on social media, um, you know, you'll get so much more other communication from the school, and you'll certainly be able to stay engaged. Um, and that brings me to my last question, Ms. Harris. In a typical year, um, if we were not in living in the pandemic, what are some opportunities for parents to engage with your school? So we have a very active PTA here. We encourage everyone to join. We also are a Title I school and we have parent meetings throughout the year, usually between three and five at different times, whether they be during the breakfast, lunch or dinner hour. Um, and we really need parents to participate so that you'll know what's going on with the school and maybe you have great ideas to offer, you know, new things to come to our building, but we ask that you participate during testing as proctors, testing proctors. We always need a lot of assistance so our students can successfully um, take their ELGs. All right, so lots of ways to connect, whether it be through the PTA or some type of volunteering or just coming out in the evening to uh, a parent night. Um, lots of ways to connect there at CMS. That's great to hear. So we are going to move on now to learning a little bit more about the school. Um, we'll be able to see um, a bit of a slideshow and there are some video components that we'll see. Um, bear with us, those who are watching, we'll have to do a little bit of mixing up of who's muted and who's unmuted uh, as, as we um, play these videos. And so just be patient with us. Um, oh, can I throw out a disclaimer here? Yes, so absolutely. Not only are we here dealing with the COVID pandemic, we actually, um, Hurricane Elias was very nice to us and took our roof with him. So our building is under construction. So you will see things that look different. We have students in different places that aren't typically there. We will not go inside of the cafeteria on the video because it's currently a storage unit. Um, so things are a little bit different, however, the lucky part for us is that we have a new building coming for that half of the building. The seventh and eighth grade wings will be pretty much new, new space. Um, and they are deemed to be ready by the beginning of the school year, the upcoming school year. And parents, I just want to say, if you're coming to EPS, you are getting one fantastic principal who has had to navigate having her sixth grade students in the building where it's safe having seventh and eighth grade students across the way over in a church um, because their portion of the building is under construction, having students at home during virtual learning. She has navigated staying connected with her families and students in such an amazing way. Um, and you're just so lucky if you end up going to EPS and get to work with Ms. Harris. Um, and just, just real creativity and innovation there this year. Um, all right, we are going to turn it over to Mrs. Lucas, and I believe that she's showing part of the PowerPoint. Um, and Ms. Lucas, I'm going to ask you to unshare for just a second so I can change the um, speaker view to gallery view and make sure that the PowerPoint gets recorded. Um, there we go. Uh, so if you'll share your screen and while she shows the PowerPoint, Ms. Harris will tell us some about it. And then during video parts, Ms. Harris will mute and we'll hear the pieces of the video. Um, thank you all for putting this together. All right, so again, we did have to think outside of the box because it's different here for us this year. So welcome to our virtual tour, COVID style edition. Our people here. On the front lines, we have myself. I have two assistant principals here, Ms. Chantel Lane and Mr. Lorenzo Lee. The faces of the front office in which will answer your many phone calls that we love to hear um, are Ms. Evans, our administrative assistant, Ms. Stanton, our data manager, and Ms. Leggett, our book, bookkeeper and payroll specialist. Here you're gonna see just this R during COVID world, you'll see the mask here. We did do some popsicle um, outings in the beginning of the year as rewards for students. So if you see them with the mask off, they are six feet apart and spaced out, but they still deserve a 
a few treats and you're going to hear from a few teachers about ips this building is full of so much rich history we have a prime spot here right next to ecu's campus the students are phenomenal we get students coming in from different parts of the community which makes our school very diverse my kids are very sweet very loving and they inspire me to come here and do my best every single day. An eighth grade teacher, it's kind of sad when they leave for high school, but to see them grow as individuals, come here from other schools and say they love it here, that's all you need to know about CMS. One thing I like about CMS is the positive relationship between the students and the teachers. One thing I love about CMS is the victims and not for the same being as the I like the different assignment opportunities. One of the things that I like about Ips is the teachers. Uh, so I, I, I think that one of the best things about Ips is the people, right? I mean, you can have a tremendous institution with some really not tremendous people, and it will uh, it will make the wrong impact. But this team here, uh, from a great level team that I work with to content level team that I PLC with, are really committed to the same thing, and that's to the success of the students we serve. And we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the students. And um, I, I know that each and every one of my colleagues is committed to that goal. So, welcome. This building is. And see amidst the place. Let me show you around the school. So, first place you go when you walk through the CMS is your first class. So, I'm going to shoot down the sixth grade hall and then we'll go from there. Walking around here, you can see the trophy case here behind those doors, the PE room, and the office area is that way. And these are the six grade bathrooms. When you come down this hall, these are going to be your very first classes. At the moment, because of COVID, we have eighth grade teachers in here. But when we come, there'll be sixth grade teachers ready for you. Now, which is probably the most important place for students here to put in is the lunchroom, where you get to talk to your friends and just chill. We have a lot of stuff in there at the moment, so we're not going to walk in there right now. Through there, down that hallway, there's ways to go to different buildings in the school. There are many different electives as in PE, art, music, uh, STEM, and go grow. Down that hallway is STEM and go grow. Uh, I've met both of those people. They're very nice people, and they most likely be excited to teach you. And, and down here is where you go to your other building. And down this breezeway, you can find your other buildings, as in music and art. Never been to art, but I've heard she's a very nice lady here. So I'm excited to teach. Looks like she loves her job. And the music teacher, Miss Bishop, I've met her. She's very nice. And a very nice teacher. She knows how to teach and what she does. So a little bit of what you saw was under construction. <clears throat> However, our electives are, some of them are outside of the, the building. So our art and um, art orchestra and music are outside in the annex part of the building. One health and PE class as well. Health is outside, PE is in the gym. So you have to be prepared weather-wise. And here we have Coach Daly talking about that we offer um, at CMFs. And his video is kind of long, so I'm going to minimize it for us. And what we, we participate, of course, in all middle school sports. As most schools, we have cheerleading, volleyball, football, basketball, soccer, softball, baseball, um, track, cross country. So the normal um, sports that everyone has. Sixth grade can participate in all sports with the exception of football. They're not allowed to participate in football. And I did not say volleyball, but we have a great volleyball program as well. Um, of course, students have to maintain a certain grade point average. They have to pass um, 
in a regular year, they have to pass four out of their five classes um, to participate. So things did change a little bit because of COVID, but we have to keep them, remember that we are student athletes. So we're students first. Hello Ms. everyone, this uh, is Chris Daly, Health and Physical Education. Yeah, let's go to the next slide. Hi, my name is Coach Hurt and I am one of the health and PE teachers here at CMS Middle School. And I just want to tell you a little bit about our subject. Um, one of the best things that CMS offers is the fact that we have one of the best middle school gyms in the county and maybe even in the state. Uh, so it allows us to do so many different things and so many, we have so much space to do lots of different activities. Um, the other thing that's really cool about middle school health curriculum or physical education and health curriculum is it's two disciplines in one. So not only do we get to learn about, P, learn things in PE, um, we also get to focus on health education as well. So it's a really good, well-rounded program. Um, recently with the uh, restrictions we face with COVID-19 this year, we have really focused on overall health and wellness with an emphasis of fitness and physical education and also some activities that normally with bigger class sizes we aren't able to do. So that's been really fun to have the kids engage in other activities um, that sometimes we aren't able to do. Um, and health, I have felt that our students are really a lot more in tune with health and wellness with everything going on with COVID-19, with mental and emotional health and being healthy to build our immune systems to fight infections. So it's been really fun to see that the kids are very much in tune with everything going on in the world and why it's so important to be healthy and physically active. Um, CMS is awesome place to be, so we hope that you choose us. Our music and arts program here is amazing. So here you'll just hear brief statements from each of the teachers specific to their programs. The band program at CMX is award winning and we have lots of bands to offer. You can join band in sixth grade and then you continue learning in sixth grade to seventh grade band and eighth grade band. And we are also one of the very few, if not the only middle school in Pitt County to offer a jazz band. And jazz band can start in sixth grade as well. When you are part of the band program, you are part of so much more in addition to just making friends and meeting people that you can be lifelong friends with in your life. We learn a valuable skill, and there's so many studies out there that say those that are involved in music at an early age do better on test scores and just are more well-rounded. So being a part of the band program means a whole lot more than just learning to play your instrument. So of course we do that. We are also, I said we are award-winning. We travel as a band group and go perform for judges all across the eastern part of North Carolina and into Virginia. We have opportunities for students to take field trips and go to Bush Gardens along with just doing the performances and the performance based as well. And that does include the jazz band. So it's a great opportunity. You can still do sports, you can still do clubs, you can do all of it and learn how to be an instrumentalist as well. Hope you join. Hello, I'm Ms. Bissett and I'm the chorus and general music teacher here at CMS Middle School. And when I teach chorus, I'm looking for kids who are interested in singing doesn't have to be the best thing they've ever heard, but if they like singing in the shower, that's what I'm looking for. It doesn't matter what grade, we accept anybody, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade at any point. Um, so anybody who's interested in singing is for my chorus class. And then I also teach general music. So the idea behind general music is I like to teach a little bit about everything in music. So when a kid leaves here, they learn how to read music, read rhythms, they learn how to play certain instruments. So I actually teach a little piano, I teach a little guitar, I teach a little drums. So general music is really generally anything in music. Hello, my name is Betsy Hughes and I'm the orchestra director here at Epps Middle School. I also work at JHS High School. I'm so glad that you guys are considering coming to CMFs for your sixth grade years. Joining the orchestra is one of the best things you can do for your educational experience because you can continue as a sixth grader all the way through your senior year and continue to play after high school. I have several students that continue that have continued to play in college and beyond just for the love of making music. Some of the things that we like to do in a non-pandemic year are trips. 
um, two years ago, we took a wonderful trip to the beach and we performed at uh, the Maritime Museum in Beaufort and we took our kids to Fort Macon State Park. So those are all things that I, I look forward to doing in a non-pandemic time. We have an opportunity to be a part of the all-county orchestra here for Pitt County Schools. And some students that are at a high level may choose to audition for the North Carolina Eastern Regional Junior Orchestra, which happens every May. And it moves from place to place, but that's an opportunity for advanced students. If you have any questions at all about orchestra, please contact me at hughesb1 at pitt.k12.nc.us. Hello Bulldogs, how you doing? This is Mr. Evans, or Coach Evans. I am the STEM teacher here. I am also the head football coach here at CMS Middle School. What is STEM? STEM is an educational program dependent on teaching students in four explicit orders, such as science, technology, engineering, and math. Instead of teaching the subject separately, STEM incorporates them into a strong learning worldview and on genuine applications. Then that brings you to my classroom, College and Career Exploration Center where students can come in and explore and do hands-on activities and be themselves when they, are in my, when they are in my classroom. The types of projects that you will be doing are intro to engineering, electricity, electronics, intro to culinary, where you're able to cook, intro to health science, intro to child development, where you're able to take care of, you know how to take care of a baby. That's just the name of you. Also, I feel like six through eight grade students are great candidates for my classroom. It gives sixth graders a head start, were they able to take my classroom for the next three years? It gives my eighth graders a head start um, into, uh, in, in going into high school. My course allows students to understand preparation for college, and what type of careers they are, they are looking to get involved in when they are in the workforce. I feel like this course gives my students hands-on experience with real-world situations. Go Bulldogs! And Mr. Evans has been a great asset to our school this year, and we're excited. We're ready for him to put the Bulldogs on the football field as well. Um, here we have Ms. Taggart. We're not going to go through each one of the videos remaining. We have Ms. Taggart. She's our AIG and um, Go Grow teacher. We have Ms. Smith Ampley. If you've paid attention a little bit to some of the artwork that was on the video with Jamal taking us through the building. She is an amazing art teacher and you can tell that she definitely has passion for her job and the students. Miss White here is our media coordinator. Um, our media center had just received a current um, upgrade. It was one of the coolest ones in Pitt County before the the roof blew off, so we are temporarily operating out of a media boutique close down here, a very <laughs> closed in room. Um, however, again, on the bright side, we get another redo for the media center. So our media center, we're gonna, I'm gonna actually ask you to play this one. Our students have a lot of opportunities to be involved in the school here through reading. And she'll talk about some of the activities that she does. Hello, my name is Amelia White. I'm the media coordinator here at CMS Middle School. Um, currently, we do not have a media center space um, due to uh, the hurricane damage, but um, by August, it should be um, back up and running. Um, in the past, uh, actually two years ago, we received a grant for over $54,000, which allowed us to purchase furniture, um, new furniture that is um, interactive um, and allows for collaborative workspace. Um, very 21st century with flexible seating. Um, <clears throat> so that is something really new and exciting that is still going to be new to us since, um, unfortunately, this is going to be our first full year with the new furniture. Um, but that is something to look forward to for um, rising sixth graders and um, the seventh and eighth graders as well. We do have um, a lot of makerspace kits that allows for creativity, and um, we have a class set of iPads for both the teachers and the students to use um, when they collaborate with me, the media coordinator. And just to say, all of those photos were pre-COVID, so they were events that took place prior to COVID. <laughs> And this is Miss Atkinson, and she looks asleep here, but she's very much wide awake, and she loves um, Epps, she loves her students, and she's our CTE teacher. 
And there you have CMFs. Um, I will just, just say, and I, you might have some more questions for me, Colleen, I don't know, but EPS to me is like the melting pot. It really is. There are, there are students from everywhere, all different you know, backgrounds, and that's what makes each day amazing. And I, I like to pride myself in saying I'm kind of like Mama Harris, like mama away from the kid, mama away from mama from 7.30 to 3.30 in a normal school year. Um, I have two daughters of my own, and I always say I have 656 kids because I not only have my two, I have yours as well. So I'll treat your kids just like I'll treat my kids. There's just a couple things that I don't have the option to do to your kids, but I love them every day from the time they're here, and we're here for their needs. And definitely, um, you know, my job will not be my job without the students. And that's what's hard about the current times is that all my students aren't here. And I've, I've only really been here a very short period of time, a month with all of the students. So it, it's really been different, but I do love it. And I, I think if you ever get the opportunity to come by, you'll see that. So I know we had to do videos different this year, but I'm also available if you would like to schedule an appointment to meet with me or a phone call, a Zoom meeting or whatever and ask specific questions. I'll be glad to work with you all as well. Excellent, so much. Uh, thank you all so much. Um, Ms. Lucas, I'm gonna ask if as co-host, if you can stop sharing the screen. Um, I've run into some computer glitches while we're recording. Um, Thank you so much. This was a fantastic tour and parents out there, I hope that you uh, will consider CMFs among your choices as you um, think about middle school and uh, especially if you're moving here and you're looking you know, for at lots of different locations. Um, but thank you all for this fantastic tour and for everything that you've done um, to help parents and families see your amazing space and more than your amazing space, we've had an opportunity to see your fantastic staff and just how passionate they are about being there at CMFs. So I hope everybody has a great day and I'll look forward to seeing some of you parents on other school tours. Thank you.